night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Except for Jazz Jackrabbit, that was quite loud. Moon had installed DOS on a thin client and he was quite proud. Yeah. You may be wondering why this video had a Christmas intro. And it's because, um, you know, uh, people are probably going to ask me, what'd you do over your Christmas break uh, when I go back to school? And uh, yeah, so I made this video to tell them what I was doing over my Christmas break, and it was this. Um, not Daggerfall, but the thing running it. You know, sometimes I wonder if modern gaming just, like, isn't it anymore. Like, I was born in the wrong generation, or I just, like really need to go back to, you know, PC gaming's roots. Because, you know, nowadays you have companies doing that thing my dog does where she thinks because she can just drag me outside and then come right back inside means she gets a treat. Well, Bethesda... Bethesda, you don't get to triple dip. And I'm getting tired of it. So, should I just build a DOS PC out of a $5 thin client? I guess I have to. MS-DOS is an operating system only really fondly remembered by tech boomers and predates probably 90% of you watching this right now. It was written in x86 assembly and came out in 1981. After being the prime thing on the market for a hot minute and spending a decade-long tenure as the foundation for the Microsoft Windows line of operating systems, it was quietly killed in the year 2000. People born when this OS finally gave its last breath on the market in the form of Windows ME are old enough to drink now. So it's really no surprise basically nobody really uses it today, at least on a daily basis. It's clunky, esoteric, and lacks all the nice features computers and devices have today. So why the hell would I try to make something just to use DOS? Well, first of all, DOS emulation, as advanced as it is, is still not quite to the point where you get your truly authentic experience. I mean, I could paint everything beige, use an old IBM keyboard and non-optical mouse while blasting hot air onto my legs, but even then, I still don't quite get it. The story begins in 2020. The early spring. I had just finished binging LGR for the third time that year, and the pandemic was literally around the corner. I thought about the process of making a very small form factor Windows 95 or DOS PC and basically impulse bought two thin clients for $5 each from a guy whose house looked like a castle. I failed to get anything to work because I'm a big dummy doo-doo head and basically gave up. Fast forward to rather recently, I was playing Dune on DOSBox in class and I thought, what if I did this on a real computer? And thus I dusted off a thin client that managed to post and got to work. Well, I can easily tell you that the project didn't quite go as planned. I ran into three major issues. One, the USB CD drive that I had could not get enough power from the thin client itself. Two, there wasn't a single floppy header in sight, so it's not like I could install a floppy disk reader. And three, all the converters I could use for different stuff had compatibility issues with the thin client's power. How do I solve this? Well, by tethering this to an older XP PC's disk drive and burning a load of disks before I finally got a build installed that actually could read USB mass storage devices. Little did I know this required more than one driver and resulted in a lot of plastic waste, but let's not talk about that. Bada bing, bada boom, and after several late nights of scouring the internet for sound drivers and formatting, reformatting, and re-reformatting a 2GB flash drive, I was able to get this thing to run games. Serviceably. Yeah, despite being good hardware for the time, there are still a host of compatibility problems, memory issues, and since there's no floppy or disk drive, it's a lot harder to get the games I want on this thing without trying to pirate. Even then, DOS games that I tried to pirate were free on good old games anyways, so I get dead ends there, and when I try to use the good old games files, eh, never mind. I'm happy with what I have. Now the real question of the hour is, does it run well? Does it play games well? Is it enjoyable to use? Is it fun to tinker with? And I would be inclined to say yes. Uh, for a thing this small, um, to be able to basically have that original hardware experience with games like Jazz Jack Rabbit CD, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I guess, Dune, without music, mind you, 
Um, it's pretty good. Um, there are several issues. Um, it doesn't have enough RAM to run certain games with music. Uh, the sound doesn't sound amazing all the time, despite being Sound Blaster Pro compatible. Um, something just doesn't sound right, especially with like Dark Forces for some reason. <laughs> oh, that's a bit better. There he is, stop him. But yeah, I do enjoy having it. I, I'm glad I worked on the project, but I think in the future I would probably just want to build an actual DOS PC that is my own. Um, as expensive and as uh, sometimes frustrating or even painful that can be, um, I feel like I would just have a better time with that instead. But the real question you should be asking after all this discussion is, does it play a certain game? Does it play a game that people always ask about when you put together any piece of technology? The most important question for gamers anywhere. Not does it run Crisis. This predates does it run Crisis. And I am proud to say that it does indeed run Chex Quest quite well, actually. Um, I don't think the music works and the intro sequence is like ridiculously stuttery, but other than that, it it, it plays. It plays just fine. Chex Quest works. Um, the reason I don't have any footage of Doom is all the copies of Doom that I own. Um, are kind of frustrating to get into a state where I could just kind of put it on the flash drive and run it on my DOS machine. My, 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 my little, my little, my little compromised DOS machine. Um, same goes with like games that I really want to play on DOS, like Beneath a Steel Sky and uh, Tyrion 2000 and stuff like that. Stuff that's free on GOG games, but trying to download the original like floppy disk or CD files is like kind of annoying to do, and I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to get that to work. Because um, like for Beneath a Steel Sky, it's like a some like. There's a bunch of scum VM files, and I'm not sure which are the game files and which are not. And it's just, it's a frustrating experience. But, hey, that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn about dumb technology. I'm here to learn how to tinker beyond just, you know, repairing iPods and looking at old phones. And so, but yeah, I'm having fun with this DOS machine. Um, obviously, running fun little games on it. I'm trying to get games like Beneath the Steel Sky and Sam and Max to run on it. Um, it is very difficult to use without a floppy drive. The idea behind this project was good, but admittedly misled in so many different ways. First of all, I wanted that authentic hardware experience. However, this motherboard lacks a floppy header and only has one PCI slot. Hardly accurate to the 286, 386, 486 computers I'm trying to simulate here. Secondly, it just didn't turn out to be that amazing of a DOS gaming rig. No quick option to slow down the clock speed, no music while playing Dune, and for a short bit, Daggerfall refused to do anything but crash in the first dungeon. To kind of ask, really, at the very end of all this, what would I do in the future? Um, will there be a next time for this kind of project? Um, and what would I do instead of this? Um, what I do in the future is, is do something different. Basically, there's not going to be a next time. Um, instead of this, I would just build a DOS PC. Do I recommend this project? Not really. Um, I feel like this is a better, like, this is a fun budget option if you want to save money, but you're certainly not going to save time. Um, things like IDE compatibility issues and stuff like that is stuff that we don't have to deal with today with modern computers, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, connectors just work. Connector is connector. USB is just USB. IDE isn't always the same IDE as what you're trying to use. Um, this isn't necessarily something that I learned the hard way, but it was something that like at three o'clock in the morning and I'm just trying to get this floppy drive plugged into this thing, or I'm just trying to get like this thing plugged into this thing and then, oh, oh wait, this doesn't even have a floppy header or like, you know, dumb crap like that. Or, oh, this cord doesn't work with this. I have to bend this pin down in this cord so that I can plug this in here random stupid annoying crap like that 
that just got on my nerves and wasted my time when I could have been spending that time playing like Mass Effect or something, you know? So, you know, I don't really recommend this project. I think it's better that if you want to get that original hardware experience that you should probably just save up and drop the money on building an old DOS PC or just go to your local thrift stores. There's plenty of pre-built old as heck computers available. I was able to get a Pentium 3 ThinkPad for $8 from a thrift store. Um, if I can find a deal that good, anyone can. Um, but yeah, I, I do consider it a fun project. I was proud of it. I do enjoy playing games on it. Um, I just don't know if I would do it again. And I think in the future, I'm going to, um, upgrade the RAM in this thing, uh, probably add a video card and um, see where I can get from there. And if I don't get like good, really good performance on, you know, the games I really want to play on DOS, like stuff like Daggerfall and well, even Elder Scrolls Arena and stuff like that, then I'm probably just going to end up going ahead and building an actual DOS PC. I'm out of focus. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day or evening or 